welcome. Welcome to Empower Church this morning. It's great to see you. Welcome to everyone online. Welcome to everyone at Westgate Church. It's great to have you with us as well. Come on, let's praise the name of Jesus today. Let's put our hands together. Are you excited to worship Jesus this morning? Come on. In the middle of the night, you were calling out my name. You were holding out your hand. You were calling me to praise. You were calling me to praise. In the middle. In the middle of the fight, you were singing over me. You were freeing up my mind. Children, we have some great kids' ministries running right now, uh, which would be blessed to uh, help minister to your kids. That's how um, upstairs um, we have for all different age groups, so you can see our Connect team about that. Uh, but we're going to pray uh, over some prayer requests, some needs within our church, some needs within our community, and maybe you have a need here today. We would love to pray with you as well, because we believe in a God that is alive and working. We don't just believe in a God that however many years ago set the world into motion and said, there you go, guys, work it out. No, we believe we have a God that knows His children. We have a God who has power over any other power on this earth to heal, to set free, to bring breakthrough. And you might be here and you have a real tangible need in this place. And I encourage you this time, why don't you raise your hand? Let's believe for the God's will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Let's believe to see healings. Let's believe to see the miraculous in this place today. Why don't we pray, church? God, we thank you that you are the God of more than enough. That you are the God, Lord Jesus.
praise and thankfulness.
church is hungry, when the church is praying, when the church is filled with the Spirit, I'm excited. I'm excited. Hey, come on, can we give one more shout of praise to God? Lord Jesus, we thank you for all you are, for all you've done, for all you're doing. Whatever's in the wheelhouse for your culture, send it on. Um, but obviously, we'll be keeping our 1.5 meter distance in all of our shuckers. Um, hey, we are so glad to have you here with us this morning here at Empowered Church. Um, congratulations, you made it through what was a very surprisingly hectic storm. Did anyone, did last night catch anyone else by surprise? I, I remember audibly saying at about 12 o'clock, man, this is just the perfect day. Looking at the sky, I was like, it's so blue. I can't believe how nice the weather is. And it was like five hours later and I wasn't sure if the apocalypse was happening or something like that. Um, it was a bit hectic. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're going to hear from um, quite maybe the best tithe offering message bringer of all time. Can we please welcome Pastor Johanna Anderson to the stage? Wonderful. Thank you so much, Harry. Harry's really great at introductions. Um, I absolutely love it. Um, so good morning, church. How great is it to be in the house of God today? Amen. I'm so excited to bring us around a time of giving and generosity today. For all of us that are joining us online, you're gonna see on the screen in a moment how we give. And for all of us here, you can see on the screen behind me the ways that we give here at Empower Church. But um, I was thinking about tithes and offerings for this week and I was reminded about how over 2020, there was a specific thing that I felt God spoke to me about finances. And the, the truth that God spoke to me was that God's provision is more than sufficient for those who trust and obey Him. God's provision is more than sufficient for those who trust and obey Him. And then I was reminded of a story in the Bible about a woman in 2 Kings, and we're gonna read a scripture off the screen really soon, but this woman goes to Elijah, who's a man of God, and she basically cries out to him and says that she has a need. She needs to have financial breakthrough in her life or she could lose her sons. So it's a pretty intense moment. And Elijah says to her, well, what do you have? She says, nothing at all, except a flask of olive oil. Elijah then says, Collect all you have to be filled, go into your house and close the door. Pour the olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting each one aside as it is filled. On the screen, you'll see the scripture as well. And it says, so she did as she was told. Her sons kept bringing jars to her and she filled one after another. Soon every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. There aren't any more, he told her. And then the olive oil stopped flowing. When she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, now sell the olive oil and pay your debts and you and your sons can live on what is left over. It is an insane story in the Bible, an amazing story in the Bible to remind us that God's provision is more than sufficient for those who trust and obey Him. In this situation, it looked like an absolutely helpless situation. She had no idea how she was gonna get her finances. She had no idea what to do. But then that moment happens. The man of God says, well, what do you have? What do you have? She says, nothing at all except a flask of olive oil. Church, a reminder for us today that God is the provider. A reminder for us today that what we have and what we bring out of obedience and trust in Him is sufficient. Can I encourage you as you give today, know that you are giving to something that is bigger than ourselves, to ultimately the kingdom of God. Thank you so much as you give today. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your provision. I thank you, God, that as we give generously into your kingdom, we know that you are the Alpha and the Omega. We know that you're the source, that you're the one who provides. We thank you, God, that as we give in trust and obedience today, Lord, and that you are gonna provide to us in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, church. Awesome. Is that Pastor Johanna? And I, I hear that story, and all I think about is, man, the price of olive oil, oil, oil has drastically gone down in the past 2,500 years. Like, it'd have to be caviar or something today. Um, um, hey, we've got some great stuff happening um, at Empower Church over the coming weeks. Um, today, in case you didn't realize, um, and you can keep up to date with everything that's happening at Empower Church with our um, Facebook and Instagram account, uh, but we have got our anointing service happening. Uh, so at the end of the service, we'll be anointing people with oil and praying over people. We encourage you um, to be a part of that. But something exciting happening next week is we have Dave Hodgson from Kingdom Investors coming to um, preach or teach whatever I think he likes to say teach. Coming to teach at the 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. service. If you don't know who Dave Hodgson is, he runs Kingdom Investors, which is an international marketplace ministry. Um, before last year happened, he he was the kind of guy who I, I chat to him and he 
just got the plane to London, and then tomorrow is heading to Washington, D.C. to chat to some government officials there. He's um, the, the power of God upon his life and the doors that have opened for, for Dave there are incredible, and we're so blessed to be able to hear from him next week as he speaks into our Frontier series. Um, and some awesome, awesome news. Um, you came to the right service today because after our 10 a.m. service, you, the rumors are true, our cafe is back and functioning, full meals. We encourage you to stick around, grab a meal. Uh, we can't wait to do community with you there. But without any further ado, we're about to hear from the Word of God, so I thought we could all stand to our feet and welcome our Pastor Paul as he brings us through this message our Frontier series. Awesome. Thank you, Sinead. Thanks, everybody. You can be seated. So good. How good was worship? Powerful worship this morning. I love singing about revival. Thanking God for it. It's powerful. Well, uh, I just want to welcome everyone online today and welcome our Westgate Church uh, uh, with pastors uh, Shane and Rebecca. Uh, great to have the church there with us today. I'm glad we can be a blessing to you again, once again as well. We pray as you go back physically that God's going to move powerfully over your church as well, which is incredible. And uh, look, for those online and those of us here, uh, we had a pretty hectic storm in Caloundra uh, yesterday, early evening. And I uh, hope you all fared up okay, you know, uh, which is great. I mean, I was, uh, the, the first storm came over and uh, I was like, okay, that's the storm. We're good. And I took the boys out for a run and a ride on their bikes. It was great. And, um, and you, suddenly we started hearing thunder in the background. And uh, we look up and there's this big, massive green cloud heading straight for us. I said, boys, we're going to have to get home quicker than we ever have before. And they're like, oh, oh, all the way home, trying to ride home. I got, had the dog with me. The dog's like, just slow down. Just stop. Just stop. You know, I was like, we've got to make it, boys. And so we got there with just in time. This crazy storm hits. And, uh, but I know there was some uh, damage on homes, things like that. So we pray and we thank God. No loss of life. Uh, which is wonderful. We're always thankful for that. And, uh, but, man, we live in a sunburnt country. We live in a country that, you know, just lets us know that what, what Australia is all about, isn't it? So cool. But um, I, I just want to, uh, you know, just let us know today, as we come today, I, I pray that you've come expectant. I pray that you've come ready for God to move today. Even if you're online joining us today, come expectant for God to move in your life. Because uh, today, yes, as Harrison said, is our anointing services. And uh, we're going to be praying and anointing people with oil after the service, after the message this morning. Uh, we will in this service, uh, we'll release the online first, uh, but we're going to pray over uh, our, our staff and ministry leaders, then our life group leaders, and then we're going to pray over everybody. Uh, so if you want prayer today, you want to be anointed with oil today, um, we, we just encourage you to be able to line up in the aisles and we'll, we'll, as long as it takes, we'll be praying for everybody today, which will be great. But you know, there's three reasons why we're anointing people with oil today. And the first is this, is the anointing of healing of sick, the healing of the sick. You know, James 5.14 says, let the elders come and anoint those with oil so that they will be healed. And, uh, and so we believe in God that if you've struggled with sickness or pain in your life in any way, that God's going to move and bring healing today. Today is a day that God can move in your life to bring a miracle in that area. So that may be you today and you're believing for that today to come with faith for that. The second is the breaking of bondages. Uh, we believe in God that bondages will be broken. Uh, Isaiah 10.27 says it's the anointing oil that breaks the yoke. Breaks the yoke. How many know that God, God wants us to be free? He wants us to live free. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. And sometimes people are carrying baggage from the past. Sometimes people are carrying words that were spoken over their lives. Uh, sometimes it could be people b in feeling like they're in bondage to an addiction or in bondage to an issue in their lives or, or something that is there that they just haven't been able to get free of. And God wants us to be free. So we're going to pray today and we're going to believe God that bondages, the past, will be broken off people's lives. The anointing oil, as we pray today, we come in faith for that, that God's going to move. And the final one is the uh, anointing unto purpose. The anointing and the purpose. You know, Jesus said this in Luke 4, 18. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me. How many know we, when we are anointed, we're anointed for purpose. It's for a reason. And it's, it's almost like the anointing for commissioning for the purpose of God. 
and, and maybe you're here today, you've been um, you know, saved a long time, and you know what the call of God is over your life. We want to we wanna anoint again and say, God, thank you for freshness to come over the call of God, over everybody's life, that we're living to the purpose and we're saying yes to Jesus for 2021. Maybe you're here today and you're new to the faith, you're new to Christianity and you, you kind of don't even know what your purpose is and you don't know, you know, you don't know how you're going to take steps in that. We're going to be praying that God reveals that to you, that the, the doors will open up and as a church, we can help you with that as well on that journey of knowing your call and knowing your purpose. You know, one of the great days was the day you were born, the second greatest day is the day you found out why. And, uh, and so we're believing for that as a church today that God's going to move on that. So let's dive into the Word. I love it if you can turn with me to Mark. Mark chapter 5, verses 22 to 28. Here we pick up the story of Jesus uh, coming into the town of Capernaum and uh, a massive crowd begins to gather. You know, I love how Luke's version of this it said that, you know, the people were waiting for Him. You know, He's getting off the boat because they were expectant for him. They were expectant for Jesus, all right? The, the crowd was already there. And so we see this crowd gather, and as Jesus starts to walk into town, uh, we pick up the story here. Verse 22, and on it says, Then a leader of the local synagogue, whose name was Jairus, arrived. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet, pleading fervently with him. My little daughter is dying, he said. Please come and lay your hands on her. Heal her so she can live. And Jesus went with him, and, and the people followed, crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years she had spent everything she had to pay for them. But she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe, for she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. How many know this is a powerful passage of Scripture? And what I want to dive into today is, is the two miracles here and what God has done. Two great keys that we can focus on today as we launch into 2021. The first is this, is that breakthrough is about God's timing. Breakthrough is always about God's timing. If you ever notice, if you've been saved longer than 10 minutes, you'll notice that breakthrough isn't about our timing. Breakthrough is about God's timing, isn't it? You know, it's about when, when God wants to move. And uh, we see here that Jairus, he's kind of the head of the synagogue, all right? And, and everyone knows him in the community. And, and his daughter is dying, sick and dying. And this is the equivalent of the pastor's daughter, okay? Of the church leader's daughter that's, that's you know, and it's a desperate miracle. How many know when you're a parent, you'll do just about anything to see your child healed? You'll do just about anything to help or save your child. And so here we have a dad, a father, in this situ situation where he is desperate in need for a miracle. And, uh, and so as they begin to head off, you know, to uh, get to Jairus' house to see his daughter heal, we see this woman, this woman with, with a 12-year issue, an issue of flowing blood. And so she, she comes through the crowd. You know, it sneaks up the back in the crowd because she's got such faith that she doesn't need to stop Jesus. She said in herself, if I can just touch Jesus, if I can just touch His robe, then I will be healed. How many know that's great faith? If you're on the chat right now, write great faith on the chat. That is great faith to believe. If I just need to touch His clothes and I'll get a miracle. All right, and she comes with such faith that day, but she has been 12 years with this issue. Now, when you understand Jewish culture in that time, is that, you know, she was considered unclean because she had a flow of blood, okay? She was unclean. She had spent every dollar she had, everything she had, going to physicians, trying to get healed. I don't even want to imagine what physicians were like back then what they were trying to do to get her healed. I mean, it must have been crazy stuff. And yet she has gone through all this pain, all this time, spent everything she's got. She is desperate. She is, this is her last shot for a miracle, all right? And here we see is that it wasn't because the woman what didn't care about the little girl. She cared about the little girl. I mean, they're on the way to, to go and see Jairus' daughter. But she thought, if I can just... If I can just sneak up the back, 
If I can just make my way through the crowd and just touch his guy, he doesn't even have to stop walking. I could just touch it and he can go on and heal that little girl. I'll go away with a miracle. This is going to be incredible. This will work out. No one will have to know, no harm, no fuss. All right? But how many know that even though she wanted to keep it silent, God wasn't going to have it that way. She reaches out. She touches his robe. She gets instantly healed. Instantly healed. And for this woman after 12 years, I mean, if you've had had an issue for 12, you know when you're healed, amen? You know when you've had a miracle because it's changed, okay? She's healed in that moment. And then Jesus stops in his tracks. All right, he stops. He said, who touched me? Who touched me? And the disciples are like, Jesus, everybody's touching you. I'm touching you. You There's no 1.5 distancing here. We're all bumping into you. We're all touching you. No, no, not just bumping into me. I felt someone touch me with faith because I felt power go out of me. I felt power go out of me to heal somebody. All right, and he stops for that reason because someone's been healed. And here's this woman wanting to just sneak in Get a miracle and sneak away. And Jesus is like, you're not sneaking anywhere. Because he stops the crowd. And Jairus is like, man, my daughter. My daughter is dying. My, it, we can't stop. We can't, we can't give a minute here. We got to get there in time. But remember I said breakthrough is about God's timing, not our timing. And Jesus said, I got all the time in the world. Because I, I can stop and, and, and stay in this moment and I can still do a miracle there. Just have faith. Just have faith. And so he waits until this woman embarrassingly comes out and, sa- and, and, and gets on her knees and says, it was me. It was me. He tell, she tells this story. This is what happened. And I've been completely healed. And see, in that moment, you have to understand She came to touch the robe for a miracle. She wanted to keep it silent. But God is never going to allow something to be kept silent when He wants others to know about the power of God. See, a testimony is very much there for others, not just ourselves. I get amazed sometimes by people that get a miracle and they don't want to tell anyone. They don't want to let anybody know. It's like, tell some people. Let people know because that's the goodness of God. I mean, it's not about you. It's not about the fact that you're some, you know, you were you were better than somebody else. No, God chose to heal you, so celebrate him. Celebrate him. Let someone else know how good God is. I mean, especially in 2021, people need to know that God's real. People need to know that he's good and that he can heal in this day, just like he did back then. So when we have a praise report, when we have a testimony, let somebody know. Fill out a praise report. They're just there. Fill them out. Put it online. Don't let us know. We, we want to celebrate with you when God does a miracle in your life. See, the supernatural power of God needs to be shared because what it does is it switches people on to who God is. So in the midst of their own issues, their own life, they can begin to see, oh, wow, there is a God. He is real and He loves me. Maybe He can move in my life just like He did in that lady's life. See, that's the power of this. That's the power of the testimony. And see, not only that, is that this, this woman thought, oh, I'm just going to sneak away. It's going to be okay. No one will have to know. I won't stop the miracle of this little girl. It's going to be fine. You know, and, 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 but Jesus is like, no, he isn't, God isn't just about healing one need. He isn't that just about, you may, she might have come wanting a physical healing. He said, no, I'm not just healing you physically. I'm going to restore every part of your life. I'm going to restore your dignity. I'm going to redeem you today. Because before that, no one accepted you in their home. No one wanted to talk to you. You were unclean. They crossed over on the other side of the street. When you were walking down, you were an outcast. You were lonely. You were afraid. You didn't know when you were ever going to get healed. So today is your day where I will not just heal you physically, but I will redeem you holistically in your life so that everybody will know that from this day forward, you have been cleansed. See, God wants to not only heal us, but He wants to restore our identity. He wants to heal every part of of your life. God wants to heal our marriages. He wants to heal our families, our children. 
He wants to do miracles and breakthroughs in your business today. He wants to move in every, every area of your life. And you might be thinking, oh, maybe God's only got room for just one miracle. All right? Because Jairus was like, oh, man, you took the miracle. It's gone. Hurry up. We were like four minutes away. And this woman is calm and she took the, she just zapped the power out in one hit. There's going to be nothing left. This is crazy. What, what are you doing? How many know God's got enough? He's a God of abundance. He's a God of more than enough. He can heal her and everybody else in that moment and go and heal and raise that little girl from the dead because that's the power of God. It's, it's endless. It's abundant. We're the ones who put limits on God. We are the ones. God's like, I'm limitless. I am God. I created the heavens and the earth. You need to start believing how great I am, believing in how big I am. See, God can do anything. And that's the faith we need to come to God with. And so she gets a miracle. She gets restored. God does this great miracle. I mean, this could have taken 10 minutes. So when we move forward, my second key today is this, is troubling the teacher. I'm going to say troubling the teacher. Why don't you put it in the chat? Troubling the teacher. What about Jairus' daughter? So we see it here, Mark 5, 35 to 36. While he was still speaking to her, messengers arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. They told him, your daughter is dead. There's no use troubling the teacher now. But Jesus overheard them and said to Jairus, don't be afraid, just have faith. Don't be afraid, just have faith. Have you ever been in that moment where you thought it's too late? Time's up. It's over. I don't know if, God, you're going to be able to restore this situation. I don't know if you're going to move in this situation. I don't know. Lord, mate, I've been praying, but I don't think you've heard me. Lord, I, I, I think time's up. I think we've gone the distance here. Maybe God doesn't want to move. Maybe God doesn't want to heal. Maybe God doesn't want to bring a miracle. Maybe God doesn't want to bring a breakthrough. And the same way that Jesus spoke to Jairus, He speaks to you today. He speaks to me today. He speaks to us today. He says, don't be afraid. Just have faith. Just have faith. Believe. Believe. See, many times people have written off what Jesus means to resurrect. I want you to sit with that for a moment right now. Sometimes people write off something that God means to resurrect back to life again. Sometimes in your own mind, you might have written something off that God's like, I, I ain't over with that yet. It ain't over till I say it's over. And if you believe me, I'll heal it. I'll bring a breakthrough. I'll bring a miracle. I'll restore that marriage. I'll restore that situation in your family. I'll bring hope into this situation. You just have to believe. You gotta believe. And so for Jairus, he's in this moment now, he's like, oh, it's over. It's done. And they're like, don't trouble the teacher anymore. It's over. See, sometimes we set limits on the miracles that God can do. We're like, oh God, God, well, you can do this, you can heal somebody sick, but man, when they're dead, ooh. I don't even think you can do that. So they're dead. This thing's dead. It's over. It's like, Jesus was like, hey, come on, guys. You're not coroners. You don't get to pronounce that she's dead if I say she's going to live. John eleven twenty five 25 says, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Just got to believe. You just got to have faith and believe that God can do this. And so he takes Peter, James, and John, heads to the house. They go into the house, and in those days, they had like professional whalers. All right, they're, you know, people, they were paid money to come and stir the situation up and scream and wail and cry and do all the stuff. They, you know, that's, that was their job. Imagine that for a job. Man, it's huge. And so, so Jesus comes in, and he says, hey, everyone just settle down, settle down. She's not dead. She's just asleep. So I went from wailing to laughing. So are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? They're laughing at him. He says, okay, everybody out. Come on, there's the door. No, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
All right, let's all head outside. Shuts the door, the gate, whatever it was, shuts it behind him. And he's got Peter, James, and John with him. And he goes into that space. You know, miracles require faith. They require faith. And so he goes up to this little girl and he, and he calls to her and, and, and raises her from the dead. Comes up, she wakes up. It's a powerful miracle. And it speaks to all of us because sometimes we may be like those, those servants that came and said, don't trouble the teacher anymore. It's over. It's done. You know, the thing's finished. It's over. Don't stop troubling the teacher. And maybe you're in your own mind. You've thought, I'm not going to pray about that stuff anymore because it's not happening. I'm not going to believe for that thing anymore because it, because it's. I don't know, think it's ever going to happen. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And you may be in yourself thinking, don't trouble the teacher anymore. Can I tell you right now? I want to tell you online, trouble the teacher. Trouble the teacher. Keep on troubling the teacher. Keep on coming back. Keep on bringing your request. Keep on praying. Keep on seeking the face of God. See, miracles are about God's timing. They're not about our own. And we don't know. We might be a day away from the miracle. We might be one corner that we got to take before the miracle happens. And we don't want to give up before the time has come. See, God wants to move in your life. He wants to move in your marriage. He wants to move in your family. He wants to move in your circumstance and your situation. And maybe you're, maybe you're a uni student today and you're sitting there and thinking, man, I don't think I'm going to finish this degree. I don't think I'm going to graduate. I don't think it's going to happen. Hey, don't call something dead when God means for it to live. He can do a miracle in your life. He can get you through out the other side because He wants to use you. Maybe you're looking at your business and saying, man, we have been running on the wire for far too long. I don't, God, I don't even think you're hearing me anymore when I'm praying. Don't call something dead when God means for it to live. It will live. If it's in His will, it's going to live. And if you still feel a peace in your heart that this is God's plan and this is God's will for your life, then keep believing. Let the words that were spoken to Jairus speak to you today. It says, don't be afraid, just have faith. And God speaks that to us right now as we launch into 2021. He says, don't be afraid, just have faith. Just have faith. There's one thing that was tested in 2020, was fear. That's what got tested in 2020, was fear. I want to encourage you today that God wants us to be aware of what's going on in our world. I'm certainly aware of what's going on in our world. I know what's going on in our world. We need to have wisdom and good stewardship and exercise that in, in the best way we can. But one thing we don't want to ever do is ever make our decisions based out of fear rather than faith. Never lead from fear. Never minister from fear. Never make your decisions from fear. We make our decisions in faith because faith is the currency of, God, of heaven. It moves the heart of God. Faith. You come to God and say, God, I believe you. I don't know how this is going to shift. I don't know what's going to happen. I just know you can. That's the heart of faith. I just know you can. I don't know how. I, I don't know when. I just know you are the answer. See, when we come in faith and we enter 2021 with faith, oh man, that's, that's a potent mix. You got faith, you got wisdom. That's a potent mix for miracles. That's a powerful mix for God to move in our lives. See, I don't know everything that's gonna happen in 2021 and neither do you. We don't all know. All I know is we're gonna approach everything with faith. We're gonna move into this year with faith. And when I've said over these last three weeks that 2021 is going to be our best year yet, I absolutely believe it. It will be our best year yet. I believe as a church and across our churches that we're going to see more souls saved than ever before. I believe we're going to see more miracles than ever before, testimonies than ever before, more people water baptized than ever before. We're going to see more transformations in our communities than ever before. Why? Because we believe in a supernatural God. We're not entering a year just kind of stumbling into it. We're entering it with faith. Oh God, what are you going to do this year? What are you going to do in power this year? Oh, how are you going to move this year, God? Oh, man, it's a difference, isn't it? It's a huge difference. And we're like, oh, man, I have no clue what's going on. Coming in and saying, God, I may not have a, 
every idea what's going to go on this year, but I know that in every moment I'm going to trust you. I'm going to have faith in you. I'm going to believe you, just like Giles, just like Giles. I love this. I love that he never stepped in in that moment and said, okay, it's done, and walked home. I love that he didn't. I love that he chose to believe Jesus. I love that he chose to say, yep, I'll have faith. Let's go. I don't know how you're going to do this. I've never seen this done before, but I believe you. I love that that woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, after all the, the indignities, after all the money that was spent, after the brokenness and loneliness in her life, that she woke up that day and heard that Jesus was coming, and she walked out her front door and said, I'm coming with faith. I'm coming with faith. I'll, I'll believe again. I'll believe again. She'd believed so many other times with other physicians. She'd believed so many other times in so many other situations and circumstances. But she said, I'm not going to write off what God has called to live. I'm not going to write it off. I'm not going to declare that this is it and this is my life for the rest of my days. I'm going to believe again for a miracle. Oh man, I, I, it moves me, this woman. It moves me that she had such faith that she just needed to touch clothes and she was gonna get healed. That's great faith, great faith. See, God wants to move in your life. He wants to move in your marriage, He wants to move in your family. God wants to move for those who are business people here, he wants to move in your business, he wants to move in your world, he wants to move in your community and your friendship community, he wants to move in every area of your life. God wants to move on our church. He wants to move over in power churches this year. He wants to move over our location. He wants to move in your life. If you're online right now, wherever you are, he wants to move in your life. He wants to meet you where you're at. All you need is faith. Smith Wigglesworth, a great healing minister and evangelist from the previous uh, extra, you know, two centuries ago nearly now. All he said was only believe. Only believe. All things are possible if you only believe. That's how we're going to enter 2021. We're going to enter it with faith. We're going to enter it believing that God can move God wants to move and nothing is has occurred to God about what's going on in our world. Nothing has bothered Him at all because He's got a plan and we're going to live to that plan. Amen. Wonderful. Why don't we all just close our eyes in this moment. If you're online, just stay with me in this moment now. I want to ask if there is anyone here or online at the moment that doesn't know Jesus. If you, if you don't know Jesus and you've never, never said a prayer to accept Jesus into your life, it's one of the greatest decisions and the greatest prayers you can ever pray is a prayer that says, Jesus, I accept you as my Savior and the Lord of my life. You know, the Bible says in the book of Romans, Romans 9, 10, it says, it says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. You will be saved. It's that simple. You can start a journey with Jesus just by praying a simple prayer. So today I wanna encourage you Maybe you've been doing life your own way and on your own for far too long. Because I want to encourage you today and say life is so much better when it's done with God than without Him. See, God has blessings, promises, healing, hope, wholeness for your life. God can set us free from our past. He can move in our lives. He can do miracles. That's the supernatural God that we serve. And, 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 and the majority of us here have said yes to Jesus and we're living that life best life, a life with, with Jesus. So I encourage you today, if you've never said yes to Jesus, I want you to lift your hand right now and say, I need Jesus in my life. I want to say yes to Him today. I want to accept Him into my life if that's you. Say yes to Jesus. Maybe you need to make a recommitment to Jesus. Maybe you've said the prayer before, but you know in your heart and in your life you've pulled back from God and you need to make a, a recommitment to Jesus today. Lift your hand as well. Say, I need Jesus. I'm saying yes. I'm saying yes to Jesus today. If that's you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful. Well, we're going to pray this prayer. And for anyone online, wherever you are right now, I want you to pray this with us as well. So just repeat these words after me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin and my past. I accept you today as my Savior and my Lord from this day forward. I'm born again into your family and your kingdom. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Hey, can we put our hands together and honor anyone who said that prayer for the first time? Maybe online as well, you may have said that prayer for the first time. That is incredible. You know, in Empower Church, we would love to help you in any way we can. And uh, what we do have through our Connect team for anyone who's here today physically, um, we have a resource pack that we'd love to get to you if you did pray that prayer for the first time. We've got a Bible in there, some information about what it means to follow Jesus. And we've got many of them there. We'd love to give them to you. Uh, they're free. And for you, so please don't go home without chatting with one of our Connect team in the foyer. If you're online, uh, on the screen right now, there is a link there that you can go to and personally message our team. And they'll be able to arrange to get that information to you as well. We just want to help you on the journey of knowing Jesus, which is wonderful. So good. Well, uh, for anyone who has joined us online today, uh, we love you. Uh, so being so great to have you with us. Thank you to Westgate Church, Pastor Shane and Rebecca. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, have a blessed week this week. And uh, we just honor you and pray you have, we'll see you next Sunday. And uh, if you're back physically, Westgate, have a great Sunday as well. Bless you guys. Awesome. Well, for the rest of us here, uh, we're going to pray now for our staff and ministry leaders and for life group leaders. So I want to invite all of our uh, ministers.